Hey Maestro, who's stronger, you or Lord Regent? Well, if he was empowered by his throne, he might cause me a little trouble. But would you wipe? Nah, I'd grip. Maestro Evangard Rest was convinced that the ill-tempered Purple Cloud was capable of defeating Regent. But at Lord Regent's throne, the Maestro felt true fear for the first time. And before Maestro could unsheath his blade, DOMAIN EXPANSION! MALEVOLENT THRONE! His power is overwhelming! You can see him, Maestro Rest! You can see my relic technique! Hey guys, it's Zack. I believe I speak for everyone when I say that we were pleasantly surprised by the Shadow Drop Maestro boss fight in last week's patch. With a line of dialogue being added that hints towards a potential fight against the Lord Region himself, I wanted to give you guys a rundown on what to expect from this. I'll be going over the lore of Lord Region, what I believe will be the key to defeating him, and the rewards you could obtain from this feat. Before I get started, I just wanted to say that if you've liked my recent videos, I'd greatly appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Currently, 96% of my viewers are unsubscribed, so I'm hoping to get that number up to 6% by the end of March. The Lord Regent of Etria, or personally known as Zaire, the fourth prophet of the ministry, is one of the most powerful figures known to us in Deep World. Before the events of the game, the Lord Regent rose to power through the assassination of the King of Etria carried out in the book titled Stars Above and the Blades Between. I wanted to take a moment to talk about this book as well as Operation Puppet Master as I believe they are both vital in understanding the Lord Regent's origins and the potential reward of his fight. If you're not interested in Deep Woken's lore, I provided a timestamp for you to skip through this portion. Feel free to, but I think it's worth paying attention and I'll be showcasing community fan art throughout this portion of the video. Stars Above and the Blades Between follows a young guard of Etria and member of the Four Braves named Tavi. His mission is being one of four guards entrusted in accompanying the King of Etria on his voyage to the Central Luminant. Unbeknownst to those around him, Tavi has been entrusted with the Queen's Blade by a Shadowcast user named Bephalos. His mission is to use the power of the Queen's Blade, which shields anyone slayed by it to the depths with no escape, to assassinate the King of Etria. It seems that Tavi is in belief that his friend or potential spouse Raleigh was murdered by the King of Etria, along with other members of his family. Waiting patiently for the right moment, upon the entrance of the boat to the Void Sea, Tavi successfully assassinates the King. With the King of Etria out of the way, the Ministry moves quickly to enact their plan of usurping the throne before anyone notices, as the Etrians wait patiently for the King to return, which he never will. To be honest, I am in the belief that Tavi is simply a man weak-willed through the loss of his spouse and because of this, fell easily to the manipulation of the Ministry. Throughout this book, the King of Etria seems as nothing but a jolly man willing to help the people around him. Unfortunately for us, it's up to speculation whether or not this is true, but knowing the Ministry, I wouldn't doubt that my suspicions are correct. Operation Puppet Master follows logs of an authority operation that's purpose is to discover the true identity of the Lord Regent. First, the man attempts to interact with civilians with little to no help. Next, they use Thunder Call mind probing on a captured guard. Again, this leads them to answers inconclusive to their own, and further usage of this technique appears blocked off by some kind of barrier. Next, upon the same guard, the authority interrogator uses an amnesiac to which again the guard's answers shift. This further confirms the interrogator's suspicions. The guard's mind is completely compromised. To find answers, he increases the voltage to a lethal amount and upon doing so, finally achieves his goal. The interrogator comes face to face with Lord Regent's true form, a horrific creature with black tendrils flowing like ribbons and gleaming emerald eyes. After this interaction, the interrogator himself begins to feel his own mind affected by Lord Regent. He comes to the conclusion that all Etrians must have some sort of mind veil placed over them by him, something thought to be impossible. Unfortunately, for our protagonist, it is almost guaranteed that he has succumbed to the sight of Lord Regent, and the report was compromised before it was to reach Warden Jericho's hands. Now, this is interesting. The interrogator in this book suggests that the notion of a mind veil being placed on all citizens is completely impossible, and with all due respect, it would be without some sort of limitless power. 
Lucky for Lord Regent, the coral shrine that he sits upon is the source of it. Discovered in the first layer, the coral shrine increases the power of anyone who sits upon it to an unfathomable amount. So, after all that out of the way, let's get down to brass tacks. How do I think the boss fight is going to go? Well, I believe there will be two phases. The first phase will consist of Lord Regent sitting upon his coral shrine. He'll most likely have some sort of evolved shadow cast magic similar to Maestro's evolved Galbreath, as well as the evolved forms of contractor magic. I wouldn't be surprised if his magic during this phase is incredibly powerful, more so than Maestro. With the power of the Coral Shrine, he is nearly unstoppable. Because of this, I believe the first phase will be primarily focusing on evasion, while striking critical points with the intention to knock Lord Regent off of the Coral Shrine as, without it, he will lose the majority of his overwhelming power. Upon successfully knocking him off of his shrine, he will then, with a GPOS cutscene, transition into his second phase. The Lord Regent will amass as his true form, this horrific monster of glowing tendrils and emerald eyes. Upon this, you will have a set amount of time to defeat the second phase before his overwhelming presence takes control of you, as he did with the interrogator. In this form, I wouldn't be surprised if he had some type of unique magic only accessible by the prophets of the ministry. This will be more of a standard battle, fighting to defeat him head on before you run out of time with your own insanity worsening by the minute. Upon defeating the Lord Regent, I believe that the reward will be none other than the Queen's Blade, or at least a replica of the Queen's Blade. We already know that the Shattered Katana is a replica of the King of Etria's legendary weapon, so why not add a Queen's Blade replica into the game? I feel like it'd be a great touch to balance out the lore, as well as provide everyone with a dope weapon. Of course, this isn't set in stone. Personally, I have no idea how the boss fight is going to go. But one thing is for certain, it'll be tough. Make sure to prepare yourselves, as you never know if he'll be able to trap your build in the depths, as he has done to the King of Etria. That's all from me. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.